Welcome back to Maintenance Made on a Budget. Today I'm going to show you how I turned an old bathroom sink into a new rustic slash farmhouse sink. All total project in, uh, not including the mirror, but just the sink itself, was anywhere, I think, right around $120 to $140. Um, the video that I'm going to show you is how I made this, and through that, I will explain what each piece cost. But essentially, you know, not bad, um, considering some of these things are over three, four hundred dollars uh, for some of these sinks. So please enjoy the show. I hope you like what I did. Um, if you like these type of videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. My goal this year is to do a lot more projects and to grow my channel. So if you're interested in seeing how to do these things on a budget and used recycled parts, um, subscribe and I will definitely have a lot more this year. Uh, just a overview, all of these parts, um, I bought the paint, the tabletop, the handles, um, at I believe Lowe's and Home Depot. The sink bowl part portion is a stone that we picked up on offer up. The faucet was an Amazon purchase and the mirror itself was an Amazon purchase. The, the lights I did on a previous video where I changed out the light fixture. So if you have a little patience and time, um, you can do something similar. Hope you guys like this how-to video and um, feel free to leave comments down below. Thanks guys and enjoy. Alright, so this is going to be the the uh, vanity that we're going to be sanding down and refinishing. So, like I said, it was an old uh, vanity that we picked up from uh, someone who was getting doing a kitchen or a bathroom remodel. And they were wanting to get rid of this. And we ultimately picked it up um, for a different project and it didn't work out. And now we're going to actually recycle this and use it for uh, this antique uh, bathroom that we're doing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take both of those. And there is just a small size. We're going to remove that toilet paper handle. I'm going to remove the doors. And then I'm going to go ahead and sand it down, get it all, all that stuff roughed up. Um, and then we'll apply our paint. And then once the paint is dry, I will install these handles. Pick these handles up for about well, two bucks at the Lowe's. And they're going to go like that. So I'll put that on in one and one. And then we'll work on the top. And the top is uh, going to be made out of some pre-made uh, wood uh, pieces that might go around the top there. So without further ado, we'll get started. So for drawers like these, they just have Phillips head screws, easy to come off. Get the one down here. So what I'm going to do is lay those on the ground and uh, we're going to sand those down. And with this project, I have a lot more time to work with. So we're going to do this right. If you looked at my previous video with the kitchen remodel with the primer that we used, uh, had some comments on there stating that it was, you know, it was a sloppy job or a landlord job or whatever. And, Sometimes you just don't have the time to get things done. You always want to do them the right way. Um, and the right way is to remove everything when you're doing the finished model, the finished jobs. So what I'm going to do is pull these drawers off, and then we're going to sand them down. And uh, really, the purpose of my channel, if you guys haven't figured it out is doing yourself do it yourself projects that maybe you can do with items you already have 
right? It's all budget items. Um, and hopefully, if anything, you can just get ideas from my channel. You know, whether I do it right or not, I'm not a professional. Um, but just with many years of tinkering with things, we're going to take this off now. You know, I've kind of figured out how to do things. And so, anyway. All right, so I'm going to remove that. This looks like, typically, the way these are is they'll have... A uh, little keyhole in the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see that. So you'll have to end up getting uh, one of the smaller screws drivers, and we'll take that off. Okay, so to remove this piece, they have that little set screw in the bottom, and to get those off, you'll need like a little little tiny flat head. Um, you can find these kit, like these little tool kits in your 99 cent stores or your dollar stores, or these days it might become our $5 stores as inflation hits us. But anyway, you'll find these little kits. Um, they're little cheapy tools, but they work great for getting into these little set screws here. And then, um, then you'll, you'll get this off. With the Phillips, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and remove the other one, and then um, we'll get cracking. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove these side pieces. They just come off like that, and then uh, we'll bear with me here. I do apologize. Uh, comes off. And then the bottom one here. All right. So, got all of our hardware off. And uh, now what I'm going to do is show you the setup that I'm going to use to sand this down. Now, this is just a like a fiber board. It's not even real wood. Um, so really, I'm just sanding to get all these scratches cleaned up you know anything that might be on the outside of this and then what i'm going to do is to like all that smooth that up well, then what i'll do when it's all sanded down is i may go ahead and put some of that primer uh that you saw in my last video and that but actually in this case or instance use that primer as it it's intended use uh this might be a good application for that but we'll see how it comes out Okay, so I'm going to start sanding it, and I'm just going with um, 120 grit sandpaper that was left over from a previous job. You don't need anything really coarse. Um, 120 might even be a little too much. So, you know, get whatever the cheapest sandpaper you can find. It's not really, I mean, if you're dealing with something that's in this condition. If you've got more grease stains, if you're doing an existing vanity that had a lot of stains or soap or whatever on it and then you know 120 should knock most of that off um but again made on a budget you know i'm uh, all my projects are from leftover materials that i've had that I've, i can recycle or use so i just happen to have 120 grit and it's not even the right uh, it's a circular uh sandpaper and obviously i got this handy sander which is like a cone or a triangle shape Right, but it still will work. Um, so this sander I got at the Harbor Freight uh, quite a, a couple years ago, and uh, works fantastic. But when I went back to get the sand the triangle sandpaper, they didn't have it, so I just used these. It sticks on this side; it works just as fine. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start working. You know, try to keep it the same way, but just work it all around. Um, I'm going to get the inside edges and just do a real nice rough up. So we'll go ahead and get that started. Okay, one second. All right, 
so we've got everything sent it down and now all I'm gonna do is just take a damp cloth and just wipe all the dust off and there's so many different things you can do point of my videos is just to do something that's gonna look good be decent quality and be on a budget so a lot of what I do when it comes to this type of stuff is can I reuse reclaim existing pieces and make it look like something good okay so get all that sanded down um, and then also over here I sanded the boards here so you know get all these wiped up so that's what I'm gonna do now and then uh, then we'll uh, paint and I'll show you how I'm gonna put the handles on these drawers all right so we're all sanded up wiped down um, I think what we'll do is we'll just get the paint and decide what color um, they want to go with uh, but I don't feel that it's necessary to put the primer um, because this was really clean already it just had some little bit of like dust and uh, I think cement dried up cement that was on like splashed on the side so once I send it that is over here on the side well I can't see that um, and then what we're gonna do is um, put these handles right like that so we'll put one here one here and then uh, I'm gonna discuss if they want to put decorative get two more put one here and here we're going for a rustic look so that's the point so I don't think it needs any of that primer um, but like I said if you want to use the primer you know just depending on if you have a lot of grease stains oil stains deep cuts anything like that on your existing vanity you may want to after sanding down you might look at it and say you know what I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that primer so that'll add a you know 30 40 bucks to your overall project if you have to go that route so next step is we're going to get the paint. I'll show you the paint we used, and then I'll show you the top piece that we found at Lowe's that we're going to use. All right? All right, so we're ready to paint. So like I said, we've got this all sanded down. Um, the inside bottom piece, we'll figure out what we're going to do with that. It's got some issues going on down there. So we might put a little ply, piece of plywood or something to cover that up later. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to be using this bare chalk paint. So we picked this up and it's um, it's got the country farm house white. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure. Country farmhouse white uh, chalk paint. Um, we'll see how this comes out. But uh, it, would, it went for, I believe, right around 20 bucks. It was like $18.99 or $18 something for that. So anyway, we're going to get started. So I'm just going to put that there. And um, again, I'm just using all, a lot of old materials from previous jobs. As far as my paint brushes and rollers go um, but if you don't have any you might want to get whatever size you feel you might need for that project so obviously I got a pretty big size brush here but I'm just gonna go with it I like to see the comments uh, holy cow big brush like I said so with this one, I'm just going to go in the direction of the, what the grain looks like. And I'm just trying to get a sense of what this is going to kind of look like. So I'm going to be doing um, one coat. Let it dry and then see how, how it comes out. Could definitely use a roller, but... The roller I have is pretty big. I didn't feel like buying any more, you know, although I guess I could have. 
Um, but what we're going for is antique, right? And uh, like I said, there's many channels out there that can get you making antique stuff using chalk paint and then putting a wax finish on it and all kinds of different things. And, you know, it's a great thing to do. Um, we were refurbishing furniture prior to the uh, pandemic, and that's what we did. Sanded it down, primed, now I'm just going to go up and down this way. Primed, and then used some chalk paint, let that dry, and then go back over it with wax and it works really well um, but we're kind of doing like a recycled thing here like I said I picked this up for what we thought we were going to use on a previous project and it just wasn't needed and I was going to actually throw this out scrap it but I wanted to see if we can make it into something so we're going to see how it comes out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Put just going to do the front part because I want to kind of see what this is going to end up drying up as. And if we like the way it's going, we'll uh, finish it up or we'll put a second coat. And then I've also got to do the doors. And the doors, I'm just going to paint in this direction around the outside trim and then up and down inside. And when I get all that done, I'll give you a quick look. Just wanted to show you how I paint the doors. Um, I always go with the way the grain's going. So the trim, you know, you just kind of go in this direction. Get the edge. All right. And then this way I'm going to go up and down. Get the edge. And uh, then uh, this way we'll go here. So just going in the same direction as what the grain is, and then I'll back back fill in the little crevices. Main thing is just don't put too much where it starts to pull up, um, make these little drips or you know runny spots. Because uh, then that doesn't look very clean. Okay. All right, so this is the first coat. Um, just want to say a couple things real quick. Um, you know, a couple tips. Like I showed you the way to paint. The direction of the wood grain um, but let's say you're painting along and you get some hair stuck in there don't be afraid obviously you might help to have gloves uh, say you got a piece of hair there just wipe it off with your finger get that brush just go back over it don't be afraid of it you know you want to tab in those corners so you don't you don't want to get any uh, paint pulling up or turning into a drip um, so dab dab it and clear all of that out as you're painting in the inside grooves like that same thing like this see and then you want to just work it in but my point is you're going to get hair on it you know or whatever dirt um, you want to try to keep and look at that it's pulling up there a little bit so um, but definitely just take your time and don't be afraid to get a little dirty. All right. So that's the first coat. I'm going to let that dry. Um, and then we're going to put our second coat. So it seems like it's going on pretty good. I don't feel like this situation needed to have any of the one, two, three primer that you may have seen me use in a previous video. Um, again, if you're, you know, if you're working with, Something that had a lot of stains. Um, 
you know, you could put some of that primer on it, let it dry, and then put whatever type of paint you wanted on the top. That's what it's designed for. Um, but in this case, this was, like I said, it was a pretty good um, vanity. So we're just going to leave it like that. So I'm going to let this dry. We'll put on the second coat. And then uh, the handles will go on. Well, I don't want to touch them because I'm wet. So anyway, we'll let this dry and uh, put the things on and continue on. But this is, again, Chalk Paints Farm White at Home Depot. The other real quick thing I wanted to mention about the primer. <clears throat> if you're doing something like this, and it's, you know, it's going to be white, uh, putting the 123 primer, or any basically any paint primer you want, and some paints have the primer in it. Um, but if you're working on a large cabinet, maybe it's like one of those double sink ones that you're working on, you know, you might want to go ahead and buy the primer and prime it first because that small can will be more than enough to do two, maybe even three quote coats on this cabinet. So I'm not really concerned about getting the primer on it. And I'm not really seeing any dark, heavy spots come through that white uh, chalk paint. So, and I, I really wasn't concerned about that because there was no heavy grease spots or anything on it. So, you know, if like I said, if, if you've got something similar to what this is and you just did a really good scrub and clean with soap and water, you know, and then sand it down, wipe it down again, and then let that dry and then start your first paint, you should be fine without having to prime it. But you'll see when this is done, if you agree with that or not. So the first coat's done, and we're gonna go ahead and start working on the second coat. You kind of see how it came out. You can see the brush lines. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on the second coat. All right. So I just want to kind of show you how it starts to cover up those brush marks when you're working on the second coat. And again, this is a chalk paint, so we're not looking for any perfection finishes. It's going to be like a chalky used finished look. And basically, I'm just going to go right over it and uh, fill it all in. And be careful when I get to these edges. I don't want to have any drip marks. So we'll get started with that. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get the second coat on. All right. So we have three total coats now of the paint and it's dried and there's we were kind of debating whether or not we wanted to rough sand it and give it that used look and um we started to rough sand it up on the corners and it looks good but it's just a lot more work you know um but if you wanted to do that you would take some sandpaper and start roughing up and giving it that used rustic look if you wanted to go that route uh, we're going to just stick with this because, you know, everything is not only maintenance under a budget, but time as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and start installing the hardware. And basically, I just measured uh, these pieces of hardware. I actually got them at Lowe's for about two bucks each. And um, I just kind of measured it. I think it's about... Uh, you know two inches just however you want to do it pick a center point make sure they're both the same on both doors it's the way i did it is i just i'm going to measure here from the top to the top of the hardware and i also am lining it up with the little groove here so that they'll both be the same 
And then I just marked them. And then I'm going to get a drill and pre drill two holes. So I already marked those. Okay. So you can see these screws. This type of hardware doesn't go all the way through. Um, if you want to do that, you certainly can pick whichever design you want. So when you're going to pre-drill these screws, you can see they're pretty small. So I'm going to go with, and I'm just using a regular drill, um, my smallest bit. And then I'm just going to mark it up on my hole there. And uh, try to do this with one hand. And I'm just going to do a little pre-drill. I don't want to go all the way because I'm going to let the screw do the work. Then we'll do the next one. So if you can grab a, hopefully you have a drill handy. That's it. And then line the holes up. Where are we at here? There we go. There we go. Get the screw. And that way it kind of just helps get it started. And then uh, I'm going to change and then drill it down. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you when we're done. All right, so we're just going to finish. One. Hopefully it won't try to... All right. Now we've got those done. And, uh, yeah, looks pretty nice. All right, so now if you pre drill a little hole before you do the screw, it just helps a heck of a lot. It'll help kind of grab the screw and then drill it through. So now the next step is I'm going to go ahead and put these two back on the frame using the existing hardware that I removed. And then we're going to put two more of these handles. And I think we're going to just put one here and one here. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt all this up and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've gotten our sink. Um, came across this sink on OfferUp. Um, originally, we were going to put a water trough bucket uh, top on here. That's where we were going with this. But then we came across this sink on OfferUp and really liked it. So we got it for 30 bucks. And now we're thinking we're going to go ahead and stain the wood top. Get this dark and maybe match the tile. Um, but if you guys are not able to find something on offer up or one of those, you know, Facebook, uh, store app, um, you know, places on Facebook that you can buy stuff, um, I would say, go ahead and still go with like a, a bucket, uh, like those planters that they sell at Home Depot. That's what we were going to do. Um, but if you did that, you'd have to get a drill and drill the hole. Um, which I will show later once I drill the hole for this. You can still do that. Um, but we really like the way this stone looked and how it, it's going to try to go together with our uh, the sink here on these lights and all that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and keep the length of this board. We were considering whether to trim it off and make it even so it can fit right in there but what we're going to have is we're going to leave two edge uh, gaps and we're going to if it works out right we're going to stack toilet paper rolls up here to fill in the two sides once it's once we get it mounted in the wall there so where we're at now is i'm going to go ahead and stain this um but before we do that you have to keep in mind the height of your sink if you're going to be installing, even with the buckets, 
I measured this, it's about six inches. So when we went to Home Depot, uh, when I was picking up some other things, um, the faucets that they had, the only one we saw was four inches. So that ain't gonna work. Um, so we may have to go in and get like a faucet for a sink that has the long, uh, you know, the long ones that come up and over like that. That's what we're gonna try to look for now. And once I get that, set it here and measure it so I know exactly where it'll be and make sure that it's gonna fit underneath. You know, when I do my connections, that it gets underneath. So I'm not gonna mark my hole yet until I get the faucet set exactly where I want it. Mark that and then we'll do the hole for that and I'll go ahead and drill the hole. But what I can do also in the meantime is go ahead and stain this top because we're definitely gonna go ahead and stain it. If we were gonna stick with just the pell, I think our plan was just to keep the plank white like it sits there. But yeah, I think it's definitely better if we stain that top. So that's kind of <clears throat> how this project has taken a turn. But again, we're on a budget, right? I Maintenance made on a budget. So, you know, again, this is a recycled old uh, vanity cabinet, ripped out the old sink. We're gonna put the this piece of wood here that was already cut and packaged, Lowe's. This was the smallest one. I think it was 24 by 20 something. Um, I really don't wanna cut that because I don't have a nice table saw to do it. I have like a chop saw that's on a table that uh, <laughs> I don't wanna really have to cut it. So I didn't wanna cut it down to size. If you're able to do that and you like that, you know, but now we're talking tools. So picked up the board for. Okay, so we got our our um, stain. We're gonna try going with uh, dark walnut uh, wood finish stain. So we ran down. This was, I believe, it was four bucks, <clears throat> four or five dollars at Lowe's. And then a dollar brush so what we're gonna do and then I have some sandpaper left over it's a little too much um, 150 you don't really have to use that for what I'm doing but you'll see there's like some <clears throat> little imperfections here oh, imperfections here so we're gonna sand that down so I'm gonna do it just a light sand because it's already very smooth like I said I already got it at Lowe's pre-cut in this size so they had a bunch of different ones it's just easier for those of us who don't have the table saws to cut wood down to size you know and i do i probably could use uh one that i may have but it's just i don't want to damage the wood any more than i have to so point of a lot of what i do is the less work the better on a budget so here we go All right, so I'm just gonna take this. Just kind of clean it up. And we decided to go with this being the front part, just because we like the way the design is. Nothing more than that, really. So I'm gonna concentrate more on this. I don't wanna round the corners. I just wanna get that rough chop off and kind of do it once over. Then I might go on the side. Do this side. Okay. No, that should be good. Nothing crazy. Just want to clean it up before I start staining this. And I think that's good. And we'll see here. Yeah, see, it's all nice and clean. Very nice. And now I'm just gonna get a damp rag, wipe it all down, and then we'll start staining it. Okay, so we got a damp rag. And we're just gonna 
wipe all that salt, that dust off from the sanding. And then I want to do a nice Okay, so we'll get that set up. Okay. Okay, so got it done. When I was uh, doing the paint brush, you may feel tempted while you're painting it to just pour this along the wood and then go behind and paint it. I wouldn't do that. You probably could, but you might get a little bit of darker staining in some areas than you would in other areas. Just be patient and just dip your brush one at a time, one, you know, one brush at a time. So now using the same rag that I had, I got it a little bit damp. I'm just going to go and do basically come behind it and just wipe it off and like I said if you want something to come out darker you you can probably let it sit longer uh, but this is already a pretty dark stain so I feel like in the way this is coming out I can already see this is exactly what we want and I think we're going to be happy with the way this is going to come out I just kind of look at that you know, I'm just, again, I'm just staying with the way I've brushed everything. I'm not going to come in and do circles and all that crazy nonsense. I mean, hundred different ways to do things. Keep it simple, right? So we're going to come back, wipe all this down, back and forth. And yeah, I think one coat is going to do it for this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let this, I'm going to get this all wiped down and let it dry. And then tomorrow, because it's cold and damp outside, this gonna we're gonna do. I'm gonna let this sit for a day and just really absorb. But I'll show you guys right quick here. Yeah, really nice. I, I like that how that that came out. Then we're gonna put a shellac on that to protect it because. This is ultimately going to be a sink for kids. Well, it's going to be a, a you know a bathroom sink that's going to be used. So brushing teeth, getting on there, and putting things on it. So we picked up this shellac at the uh, hardware store too. It's uh, a clear coat shellac for sealing. If you guys can see that there. Okay, sorry. So um, we're going to spray this down at the very end and then uh, once this dries and then the next step will be to mark my sink exactly where we're going to have it and go ahead and cut the first hole and all right we got all the pieces um, so we've got the stain kind of sitting there and our faucet came in from Amazon so it's going to be like this with like a rainfall design and you can see that we're probably going to go with something like this or it'll go in like that on the right hand side so what I want to do before I start marking my holes and uh, this came on Amazon for uh, I'll have to figure out I think we paid about 30 bucks for that so what I'm going to do now is take this sink okay there's a a bolt right here so what I'm gonna do is loosen those two bolts up keeping it tight on here and then once I get this actual sink loose uh, we'll probably have someone come in and help me um, pull this whole thing out and then what I want to do is obviously I'm gonna disconnect shut the water off I'll do it right now actually um, I'm gonna disconnect these hoses but what I'm wanting to do is I want to slide my vanity piece over here and kind of mark up where the sink is and make sure it's not going to be uh, too off 
too high or too low and may have to take some of this apart. So we'll do that now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect and you'll have a part of it. I've got a blanket, a towel and a bucket ready. I'll go ahead. Actually, I'm gonna probably take those off too. And then the same thing for this side. You can just twist it off with your hand. Okay. All right. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just remove these hoses out all together. Let's get uh, just better access. So, uh, there's the hole. All right. So we're gonna take this bolt out, and like I said, oh well, yeah, that's still a pretty good. Um, you're gonna need two people for this. Oh my god. Yeah. I need a little bit closer. Here. Buddy. So now I'm gonna take this hose out of the way. Just be careful when you're working with these. It's the light hose. not too bad, you're just going to need someone to get your help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish removing this hose and then I'm going to remove the second bolt holding this sink and the majority of the weight will probably be resting on this piece here so we'll have to go ahead and disconnect the plunger and we'll do that. Action. Okay so if you can scan up in here there was actually four bolts holding that uh, yeah. bracket. So you got one, two, and then on this side, yeah, three, see, four. You okay, you can zoom back out. Okay. All right, so now the rest of the sink itself is sitting up on this piece. Okay. So I'm gonna remove all this yeah. lagging so I can see where we're gonna wanna break this apart and we'll have to get some assistance to do that. But what I want to see is where can I take this apart? So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up to where I can see. But what I'm wanting to do essentially is probably, okay, right here. So we'll loosen that up and I should be able to remove the sink. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up our camera on a pod and then we're going to get some help and uh, get this thing off before we go any further. Okay. Okay, so with the bolts loose and that loose, the bracket already fell out, but essentially you just have to pull up. Okay. And the issue is people... <laughs> okay. So, okay, but you can see here that the sink was sitting on top of that. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're going to fill in the patches with some stucco spackling. So you just get these little pieces and cut however you can do it. And then we get some. And then you just try to work it in the best you can. And now I'm doing this because this is all going to be behind the sink and no one's going to see it. But I still want to at least get it somewhat cleaned up before I put the sink in there. And it doesn't really matter how thick it is because we're going to come back and sand it down. So, and then I'm also going to do the holes. So my putty's a little dry, it's old. I'm gonna probably have to add some, a little bit more water to it, but you get the idea. So we're gonna go ahead and finish all this up. I'm gonna seal that in, I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. And then on these holes, <clears throat> I'll come back and just get those filled in. And then once it all dries up, tomorrow I'll come and sand it down. I'm going to focus more on these because this will be exposed. The sink comes up to about right here. And then our new mirror is going to be covering most of that. So you'll still have some of these. So I'm going to come in and fill them in like that. All right. And don't be afraid to get it a little too thick because we're going to come back tomorrow and sand it smooth. Um, but anyway, so I'll show you the finished product. So I'm going to have to, and I'm just using spackling paste, all purpose. It's a bit old, so I might want to put a little bit more water in there. I had it left over from the previous job. get that filled in so something like that and then just go back and smooth it over I'm using a small spatula here So I'm gonna finish it up and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like after I sand it down. All right, so we got it in place. Um, still waiting for the background to get dry so I can sand that down more. But I at least wanna get everything drilled in. I wanna set the sink in and get everything in place. And then I'll remove it. And then another day, all I have to do is sand all the rest of that down paint and then I can put everything together. So the way I measured it was, I measured from the wall to the first part of the drain. So the drain, right? And I'll show you what in a minute. So what I did is from the wall to the top part of the drain was five and a half. Then from the wall to the other side of the drain, seven inches. And then I measured from this wall to the drain. And now I know exactly where to put my bit, which is gonna be right here. Now, it may be just slightly off, but it's gonna be very close enough to where I can get the sink connected. And now I know where my sink's gonna be mounted. So I'm gonna to have to figure out now where the bowl hole is and make sure it sits in there fine before I do all the, any drum. 
So to my measurement, it doesn't even work. The bow is obviously sitting too far out. So what we're gonna do then is uh, move it and use a flexible drain pipe. And I'll, I'll show you what those are. So we're gonna remove this here for a minute. And uh, so this is where we were. And I have a very good reference point of where it's gonna need to go. I just slid the bowl down here center, but we found that it looks too far to the right. So we, we're gonna slide it slightly to the left and that's where I'm gonna mark, drill my hole. And then once it sits down, we'll use the flexible piping for the drain uh, to make it match. All right, so I've marked where I wanted to, to drill the hole for the drain to connect to the sink. I uh, marked it. So this is where the actual drain connection is going to be. So basically, I just came down to where the bowl basically looked center of my wood. And then uh, we had to slide it over a little bit because it, it's more center there. So what I first did is I marked it, I pre-drilled it, and then I have a multi-metal bit, but I'm gonna use it for wood, we'll see how it works. So I couldn't find my wood drills. Um, and then we're just gonna slowly start. Using a bit like me, you're gonna have a really rough cut, but since the bowl's sitting on top, I can get away with that. Um, but if you're gonna be doing projects, you know, using holes like that for whatever reason, use a wood bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that hole. I'm gonna, I need to slide this out a little bit and go ahead and cut all the way through. I'm gonna wipe it all down, set it back in place, and then I'm gonna continue hooking everything up with the sink underneath and then I'll mark where I want my faucet to go. And I'll drill that hole, put that in place, and then basically get everything rough put together. And then I'm gonna take it all apart and then put a nice clear coat on my top and finish the back part of that wall uh, once that uh, spackling completely dries. It's been really cold and rainy, so it's been taking quite a while to dry. Okay, so I already drilled for the faucet and the sink. Everything connected great. So I have everything taken apart. And this is the third coat. I'm gonna use shellac, but you can use polyurethane as well. Um, but I'm just gonna use up my shellac here. So this is the third coat. Just let's go. You don't want to be too close. You don't want to be too far away. Nice, even. This is going to be the high use areas here. And then I'll come back to the sides. Okay, and then I'll do that side. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw a coat on the cabinet as well, or the vanity. Same thing. Just want to get it nice and covered. Let's see the high use areas. Okay, we'll let that dry and we'll put everything together. 
Okay, so I got it back inside the bathroom. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling it. So we got our cabinet back in there. I glued the top piece down and the bowl is helping it sit flush. We're gonna go ahead and insert the drain piece. This drain piece is a push, a push type. So you push it down to plug, you pull it up, push it back down to open. Okay, so the way this is gonna work is we're gonna set this down. I'm gonna go grab my pipe uh, plumber's putty. Uh, but this whole piece will just slide down and then underneath in the sink inside you can see hopefully you can see it's a little dark let's see it yeah there then you'll have that sticking through which i'm going to slide up just like that and then the nut will lock it in place so i'm going to go ahead and get started with that um just wanted to show you what i'm doing so I can be as descriptive as possible. And that's what we'll do now. All right, so we have the drain nice and screwed on tight. I uh, got the putty in there. And push down to close, push down to open. So now I'm gonna do the drain, I mean the uh, faucet. Now, if you have a similar faucet like this, um, I'm gonna try to show you how to do it. But I'm not going to spend a whole heck of a lot of time because everybody might have something different. But if you end up getting something like this, the basic way these work is they have this screw and like a little lock ring. And the way it works, if I can get my camera set up here, it would be a lot easier. Okay. So you have cold and hot water hose. And inside there, there's a threaded uh, piece. You have a washer with a uh, rubber gasket. The washer will, in this little center piece, essentially you just, from the bottom, you'll screw this in like such, and then the, it'll separate the two hoses like that. And then it comes with a extendable uh, tool so you can get underneath, oops, let's see. So you can get underneath and tighten it up like that. But this will be all from underneath the sink. So when you're setting it in there, you'll just have these. It's not, it's actually pretty easy. I was surprised how not difficult, too difficult it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then uh, connect the hoses. And then underneath, um, I still gotta connect the hoses and then that drain to underneath with a flexible fitting that I'm going to go pick up. And here we have the finished product. So sink came out really well, um, got everything connected. Uh, we threw in the background mirror, uh, got that on Amazon. Uh, we'll have the description in the link below um, if you're interested in that. It just has two hooks in the back. It's very simple to put up. Just need someone to help level it. But it was easy to get up. So we got the sink and we'll do a demo. And what I ended up doing down below, if you guys remember, I told you, you just put a flex uh, hose that you can get at your hardware store to make it match the existing drain. As long as you have the loop, um, I had to peel off the insulation, so we'll probably re-insulate it, but really not necessary. And there you have it. Farmhouse rustic sink. I also put the link for our faucet as well. And it comes with the push, push it down, Fills up. Put the nice sealant on the outside. Of course, I made that too hot. 
nice push button. Love it. You don't have to mess with the drain. So on all in all, this was a recycled sink and um, sink was 30 bucks for the bowl. Found that on offer up. The board here was probably close to $40 at home uh, Lowe's. Cut the holes to size. Faucet itself, I believe, was another 40 or so. Um, farmhouse white paint. Got it out, uh, I believe was Lowe's. Well, you'll have it in my description. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. So yeah, we're right around 100, a little over 100 bucks, not counting the mirror and the sink. But anyway, shows what you can do with little leftover tools, uh, supplies. The sink itself was leftover, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, if you like seeing videos like this budget under budget projects um, that come out like this you don't have to have skills you don't have to have special techniques just a little finesse a little patience and um, there you have it see you guys next time